Good morning, APU. I am an honorary chapel band member this morning. And this is, serves as a reminder for you all to apply for chapel band. Deadline is approaching, right? All right, let's just praise the Lord this morning. Let's start to give him a hand clap right now. to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. And I try with all my mind, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. To believe my doubts are burning like ashes in a
just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus oh yes and I just want to speak the name of Jesus and every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power And your name is healing Your name So break every stronghold, shine through the shadows, burn like a fire. And I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul.
goodness, God, you're so wonderful. And it's such a privilege to worship you and lift your name and just sing the highest praise to you, Jesus. And we know that you've created this all. And sometimes we can forget that the leaves and the trees, the animals that run around this campus, Lord, you've created them all and they're all your creation. They worship you also. Lord, thank you so much for showing us the love that you showed us. We invite your spirit in this place, Holy Spirit. We love you. In your name, amen. And it is my distinct honor to introduce our chapel speaker today. Dr. Talithia Williams is Associate Professor of Mathematics and Mathematics Clinic Director at Harvey Mudd College. She studied at Spelman College, Howard University, and Rice University, and has done research at JPL and NASA. She has also partnered with the World Health Organization in developing the cataract surgical rate for countries in Africa. She is brilliant. In her extremely popular TED Talk, Own Your Body's Data, Dr. Williams takes sophisticated numerical concepts and makes them understandable to everyone. Very few people can do that and can do it well like her. In fact, her teaching is so extraordinary that she won the Mathematical Association of America's Henry L. Alder Award for Distinguished Teaching in 2015. Apart from being a gifted professor, Dr. Williams is also very famous. She is co-host of the PBS series Nova Wonders and a frequently sought after speaker nationally and internationally. Her latest book, Power in Numbers, features the rebel women of mathematics who overcame stereotypes. With her many responsibilities, Dr. Williams remains active in her faith community and serves with her husband, Donald, as a Christian marriage mentor couple, all while being mom of three amazing boys. And today, we get to learn from her and hear her brilliance. So for the very first time in APU Chapel, would you join me give a warm APU welcome to Dr. Talithia Williams. My goodness, hey APU, how are y'all doing? Oh, somebody didn't have their classic coffee. How are y'all doing? Yeah? I, um, I love coming to your side of the town because I, I always stop and get classic coffee and uh, it's the best coffee this side of heaven. Um, heaven's gonna have great coffee because, you know, Hebrews, so it's, it's gonna be good, but um, I know, right? That was, yeah, I, I, last night I came up with that. but. Uh, Classic Coffee has great coffee. I'm excited to be here. I'm also excited to represent Purpose Church Pomona. Anybody, any Purpose Church fam in the house? Two. Okay, two people. Yeah, Purpose Church Pomona. Um, that's where I get to worship and serve in that community. So really excited to be here to share a little bit with you today. I'd love for us to talk a bit about um, our purpose, right? How is it that we can think about our purpose and fulfill our purpose? Um, and how God is somehow using me as a math professor. All right, so check out this first slide. I didn't always grow up doing mathematics. In fact, I grew up uh, on the drill team. Hey, and um, yeah, Arnold Junior High. That's back when we didn't call it middle school. It was junior high. And you see me here with some um, girls that I grew up with. We were going to a church convention, and so we would get to stop and eat like at Shoney's or Denny's or somewhere like that. And so I grew up going to church literally like three days a week. There was youth night, you know, we were in church all day Sunday. It was kind of like chapel, you know, three times a week. And um, I grew up with Jesus, grew up in a community of people who love the Lord, and so got that instilled in me at an early age. Next slide. I went on to Spelman College and Howard University, and it was here, here you see me pictured with the late Dr. Etta Faulkner. Um, she was the first black woman I met with a PhD in math. And she was really an inspiration for me because I thought, oh, like God, I didn't know that people who look like me studied mathematics. Right? I grew up not knowing anybody, any African-American mathematicians, so the thought of going to Spelman and having professors who really inspired me to study mathematics was amazing. 
I started grad school at Howard University and I took a statistics class and I fell in love with statistics and I transferred to Rice University. Next slide. Yes, where you see right here. Um, so this was my, probably one of the happiest days of my life, like second to Jesus, accepting Jesus and like getting married and giving birth. It's in the top five, it's in the top five. Um, Getting a PhD in statistics from Rice. Uh, here I am with my husband, Donald. We had a brand new baby in tow. Josiah was two weeks old. Talk about being productive. Like, here's a PhD and a baby. And, you know, I was just, just you know, pumping it out. Um, my advice, literally, literally pumping it out. My advisor, Kathy Inzer, and a recent picture of her. Um, I grew really close to the Lord in grad school because I felt like every day I was calling on him like, oh my, Lord, why, what am I doing in this program? And how am I gonna ever finish his PhD? Obviously, you have something else for me to do besides finish his PhD, Lord Jesus. Um, so that was really a, a time of, of growth and closeness for me. I remember the day before my defense, I went and uh, practiced my defense and I showed my results and my advisor was like, oh, no, I think you need to be a little further by tomorrow. And I'm like, I defend tomorrow, you know. And I remember rushing up to my room and literally praying, like, God, I need you to help this code run better. I need this model to be, like, really good and generating some results that, that made her happy and I was able to defend uh, the next day. Next slide. I spent some summers at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, not far from you in Pasadena, and got to work with this man, Dr. Lonnie Lane. We worked on the Europa Mission Project, which is actually set to launch in October of 2024. Um, Europa is a moon of which planet? Jupiter, yes, believed to be covered in ice. And so one of our goals on, on this team was to send a probe to Europa to sort of melt down through and get to some water under the ice and sample from that. So my job, uh, some of the summers that I was there, was to sterilize the outside of the probe, which was a lot of fun. I also, next slide, spent some time at NASA's, uh, at the National Security Agency. Yeah, I'd tell you what I did, but <laughs> nobody wants to meet Jesus today. Um, it's fun working for the government because at the NSA you can't take your work home because it's top secret. So I know, right? Everything you do has to be done there and then you clock out and it's like you don't exist, you don't, you know. Um, one day I accidentally took some papers home and I called in to report. I'm like, oh, I took these papers. Like they weren't secret, but you know, called in, integrity. And then the next day I pulled in and I swiped my badge and they were like, oh, so they were, you need to pull this way. I'm sorry, you need to pull over here. I mean, it was, it was like a whole, you know, whole ordeal. But I really enjoyed working for the NSA as well. It was great to um, work with these beautiful minds, right? These mathematical minds who are working to protect our country. Next slide. Next slide, yes. Um, I've also had the chance to partner with PBS on Nova Wonders. Nova Wonders is a six-part series that looks at some of the biggest questions in science. And growing up as a girl in Georgia, I grew up watching PBS. I grew up being really inspired by shows like Nature and Nova shows. So it was really special for them to reach out and say, hey, we want you to be a part of this show. So that was Nova Wonders. Uh, it came out um, in 2016, and uh, it highlighted some of the biggest questions in science. We can't build a brain, and if we could, we probably shouldn't build a brain. So, you know, if you want to check it out, but that's, that's the takeaway. Um, I also did a TEDx talk. You guys have had, you know, yeah, APUX talks, TEDx talks. One of my students was on the local TEDx organizing committee, and she asked me, she's like, hey, Prop Williams, can you do one of these talks? We really need some more people. Um, and so I did, and then the folks at TED decided, like, hey, we'd love to feature your talk on TED.com and sort of upgrade it, you know, let me upgrade you. And so you, I said, okay. Um, and so as you can see, it has been viewed a lot of times, over 1.8 million times. Half of those are my mom. I mean, every day she's like, let me look at my baby one more time. You know, so I'm, you know, okay, it might be a lot. Um, and then I got to uh, author this book, Power in Numbers, The Rebel Women of Mathematics. Um, they weren't really rebels. 
what the publishers thought Rebel would sell, like Rebel Women of the Bible. Like, you know, who are the Rebel Women? Um, I wanted it to be called, subtitled, um, Women Mathematicians with Attitude. Thank you. Ex yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't, they didn't like that either. Um, anyway, so uh, those are some things. Um, and it's funny because none of that was planned. And so when I sort of look back over that, I, I said no the, when, when uh, my student asked me to do the TEDx talk. I was like, anybody got time for that? I got these three kids under five, you know. And, um, you know, God was like, well, you know, this is something that I think I want you to do. And I was like, well, what about these kids you gave me, Jesus, you know? Um, and so I really reluctantly agreed to, to give this TEDx talk. And eventually I said, well, fine, I guess it could be like a talk to give to the public a good way to practice. And it's interesting how the Holy Spirit had to, to convince me to do something that ultimately became the thing that sort of propelled my career, because I was so reluctant. I was like, what does this have to do with me teaching and doing research? And this is like an extra thing that I don't have time for. And God was like, this extra thing is the thing I'm really trying to pull you toward. Like, this is a part of your destiny. So I now have to be careful when these extra things come because I'm tempted to be like, no. And then I have to remember, oh, God might be using that, right, to pull us toward our destiny. Next slide. Um, I serve on the faculty at Harvey Mudd College. These are a picture of some of my colleagues in the math department. I love being there. One thing I love about it is we really try to let our students see in our faculty that we believe that everybody has mathematical ability and we want them to be taught by professors who look like them and who can relate to them and who can show them visually that they're talented. And so I love working with such a great group of people, a diverse group of people um, who just bring all of their passion to the table every day. Next slide. Um, a couple of things I want to share. I've got some more videos for you because I teach y'all. So I know after about five minutes, y'all are like, oh my goodness, what? And then it's like, video, yes, everybody turns on. So I got some videos. During COVID, I got to film, uh, do a new film with, with PBS called Zero to Infinity. When they first uh, brought this idea up, I was like, who wants to study zero and infinity? Like, I've got a lot of great ideas for math shows that don't involve either of those, right? Um, but we did, we taped it during COVID and got some amazing content that I want to share with you because I also want you to be excited about mathematics. How many of you are excited about math? Let me just... Okay, okay, that was about one twelfth of the audience. That was good. No, 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 that's, that's good. Um, as a mathematician, often I interact with people who hate the thing that I do. Yeah. I sit on the plane next to y'all. I'm like, they're like, oh, what do you do? I'm a math professor. Oh, let me tell you how I hate math. Let me, t I remember it like it was yesterday. It was fourth grade. I remember my, t like, I get all those negative stories. Sometimes I want to say, like, I'm an English major or English professor and hear people say, oh, I hate to speak in English. Oh, I just hate it. Oh, talking just, ooh. Nobody, y'all don't say that. They're like, oh, that's great. English, yay. So part of my life's work is to really get people excited about the discipline that I love, and to do that is to communicate these beautiful ideas in a way that everybody can not just understand but get excited about. Yes, um, so I really enjoy doing these things where I get to communicate these beautiful, simple ideas uh, in ways that the public can understand. Next slide. Um, so this was some of the uh, footage that we got to take. Steve and I, I got to go to Arizona and do some taping, and we taped in Chicago to do a scene um, on, on, uh, in a hotel. So it was really a lot of fun, and you can sort of see us behind the scenes there as well. Next slide. Uh, last thing I want to share with you is really how we can sort of use our um, understanding of our passion to impact society. Next slide. I got to work with BBC on a five-part series called The Universe, and um, they asked me to narrate it. And so when, when folks from the UK, especially people from London, call you and they say, Dr. Williams, we'd love for you to narrate our series. And I'm thinking, like, you don't, I am from Georgia, and sometimes that country comes out. Like, let me tell you, you don't even want to, like, have this as the voice in the background. Um, but I got to narrate this beautiful series called The Universe, and my, my kids found this one day. They were looking on Amazon, and they were like, Mom, it's starring you. And I'm like, I'm just the voice in the background. Um, 
One of the episodes was on the Big Bang, and um, I got to narrate that, and it was so special because they took this time to sort of rewind to the moment, right, that God spoke and that the earth was created. And um, it was nerve-wracking to narrate, but it was so beautiful, and I wanted to share that clip with you as well. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of light. Mm. It's so beautiful um, to think about that moment. I mean, when I die, the first thing I want to do, I want to be like, Lord, take me back. I want to see that moment. I want to witness your voice speaking, right? Saying, let there be in it, in it happening. Next slide. Let's read these scriptures together. Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And Hebrews 11.3, by faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. Mm. So science takes us back so far to the beginning, but what we see didn't come from what's visible, right? It came from God's very action of speaking us into existence. I think that's so, so beautiful. Um, uh, I want to end on this story. Uh, I often get emails from people, and, and uh, uh, a young lady reached out once, um, Zoe, and uh, she said, um, I get to be somebody for Black History Month, and I want to dress up as you for Black History Month. Right? And I'm like, oh, Zoe, baby, I'm not old enough. Like, you got to be like Rosa Parks. You got to be, you know, one of the greats, you know. Like, don't, don't waste your time, you know. Um, so she really wanted to, to dress up as me, and, and so I sort of um, somewhat re reluctantly agreed. And, um, and, uh, and so she called, and she interviewed me, and, um, and so she, she wrote her little poster, and she said, uh, I'm going to, you know, send you a picture. And I'm like, well, well Zoe, what are you going to wear? Like, yeah, I don't really have an outfit, you know? Like, it's not like I got a white coat or anything. She's just like, oh, no, my mom, my mom got me an outfit. And then I was just really like, oh, my goodness, what is this baby going to wear? So, last slide. This is Zoe. She nailed it. I mean, she got the pearls and the glasses and the dress and everything, and you see her poster there. I want to just challenge you to live out the calling that God has placed in your life, whatever that might look like, right? Because God is using us to share his word and to evangelize on the stages that he's given us. I never would have thought that I'd have this kind of a platform and every time I get up on a stage, I say to myself, well, Lord, what do you want me to share with people today? How do you want to use me? Because it's not about me, it's about you and you working in and through and as me. And so help me to be a vessel for you in this space and in this place. I want to pray over you before we go um, and just sort of love on you and encourage you in your journey. I especially want to encourage those of you that are excited about science or engineering or math and um, because we need more Christians, more believers in that space. Right? It's beautiful to be in a space where um, I can see the beauty of God in so many different ways because God is a scientist and God is a chemist and God is a physicist and God is a mathematician. Right? So it's wonderful to embrace these areas because they also represent the best of our Lord Jesus. God, I pray over these students and these faculty and staff that are here before you today. I thank you for the time that you've uh, invested in them. I thank you for their attentiveness today. Lord, I pray um, that, that me sharing just fell on, on ears that were receptive to hear Jesus. I pray that you would redeem any time that we spent today and, and just help us to get our studies done, pass these exams, ace our courses in Jesus' name, even if we didn't study like we needed to, Jesus. We're praying that you would help us to pass, God. And I just pray a special blessing over the lives of those in this room, those who are watching on Zoom or listening right now, Lord, that you would allow us to go forth and be your salt and your light throughout this week. Lord, help us to find somebody that doesn't know you and love on them and share your good news with them. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.